you hear stories. I, I heard the stories. But hey, you know, we're all a little crazy in this business. And, you know, I don't want to talk about it on camera because I have kids and I want to keep this job. My name is Craig McCracken. I'm the creator of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends and the Powerpuff Girls. Basically, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is a show about family. My execu pitch for Foster's was, it's the real world meets Pokemon. Really bizarre, strange characters forced to live in this house and get along. In this world, imaginary friends are real. When a kid creates it, it appears, everyone sees it. Well, when I first read it, I was like, wow, this is like really genius. And then I started reading it more, and I realized that this script is really just a cry for help. And I don't think anyone's hearing him. What happens when those kids get too old and they don't want their imaginary friends anymore? Sorry. Where do they go? That's where this show takes place, where it's about a, a foster home for imaginary friends. Man, you should see all the kinds of friends we've got here at Foster. Happy, sad, good, bad. Well, I never. You know, every time I call him, he's in a meeting. But I don't know who he's in a meeting with. As far as casting the main characters in the show, OK, we got Wilt. Hey, how you doing? Will used to be really athletic, and he's like this sports guy, but he's lost an arm. I know I'm all broken with the wonky eye and the stubby arm. Probably freaks you out, huh? Eduardo is huge and giant and scary, but afraid of everything. See, I do scared of them anyway. Coco is insane. <laughs> the rumor is that she was created by some kid who was trapped on a desert island and was kind of losing their mind. Uh, no thanks. Mac is um, this eight-year-old boy. He's kind of shy and quiet. And then the main character of the show, Blue, is kind of like, you know, man's best friend. You know, boy and his dog, that classic relationship. The house in itself is a character, really. It's got endless amounts of floors, endless doors, endless stairways. It's just giant. You know, imaginary friends are really important because, you know, when there's nobody there, you know, to listen to you or hear your problems, these imaginary friends really help you out. I can understand talking to yourself, but arguing with yourself, I, I don't get it. They're really there for you, and you know, people shouldn't make fun of it because they're really supportive and they're really great, you know? It's not something to just laugh at. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't go up to talk to Craig anymore. You know, I never had an imaginary friend per se, like one that I could define and had a name or whatever. I've always been talking to myself, but no, I don't, I don't have any imaginary friends, no. All you have to do is see him, and you'll know. He's a little different than everybody else. What I'm really hoping is that each kid and each viewer has their own imaginary friend they like. And that's what's great about this show, is there's something for everybody. We might all be just imaginary friends of Craig's. When he wakes up, it's all over for all of us. Makes you think, doesn't it?